Alright guys, welcome back to The Existential Way. Kevin Meredith here. Now I want to close out with talking about how when the inner man is in receipt of the crowd, there seems to be a preeminence of the spirit of trauma at times before the essence of God to the inner man. And so this is the spiritual war that's between the soul and the the flesh the inner man and the trauma and so at times you have to understand that when your inner man enters the crowd at times beware and hopefully don't be beguiled by the spirit of trauma um, there is something I've observed, though, with how God uses trauma in one's life to turn the inner man to God. As if a testimony about the hardships of one's life becomes the testimony of God in associating one's inner man essentially away from the trauma no matter how deep the cut is no matter how far along that trauma has been used or has been allowed to be used to shake up that person's life and even give that person a testimony and not just keep it at a testimony about the trauma at the level that Satan would like but that the cut gets so deep that the sense of inner man is, is, is so deeply wounded that God comes in and he no longer has the desire for the inner man of the individual to associate with a lot of the ground level, surface level trauma that tends to debase the crowd at times but allows the person to sit with his or herself and relate to God. And so hence we have a system of apostasy today where things that are established, the way Satan has perfected this world, first and foremost is traumatic. The world is trauma. It's debased. So when your inner man enters the crowd, as we mature in the spirit, we understand that the natural affections of the crowd belong to the trauma before God. Uh, belongs to the control of the crowd, the obedience of the trauma of every individual that belongs to the crowd. And hence, an offense is taking up if one's inner man is so true to, to the nature of God that it elicits, a, it elicits a response, and that response, it, it cuts too deep into, uh, it gives too much light to the inner man, that the trauma base of the crowd begins to be offensed by that. Hence, the spiritual war is being conducted between the inner man and the, and the trauma base of the crowd. Now... This is why, from what I've seen for myself, when you're going through, when you're going through this existence and the inner works are becoming, you're, begin, you're able to see the inner works for your own life. You begin to elicit the compassion and, uh, for people and um, the passion that the inner man has for God after that is uh, the association, if the association is greater for God than the association is for the trauma, the divide is created right there. Okay? And what's what God likes to see is you being in, in your power that he's giving you. Make the decision every time to rely on him, to lean on him, and not fall back to the understanding of, of one's own self according to the trauma, even of your own flesh accord, which is debased in the usual crowd that we know today. So, when 
I or somebody else says, know yourself, what is the meaning of that? Because a lot of the times, the world likes to use know yourself. But the only way, the true definition for knowing oneself according to the world is really a, like I said, it, it's half a coin. It's, it's one side of the coin. And what is that side of the coin usually uh, based on? It's usually based on the traumatic existence of the world that implicates oneself to know oneself, which couldn't be further from the truth if I were to say, if I were to imply knowing oneself in terms of being a Christian follower, a follower of Christ, it's totally opposite. It's like re reintroduction of true Christianity into Christendom. It's true introduction of the inner man to acquaint acquaint oneself to the holy to the holy spirit instead of the, the trauma based orientation of of the crowd or of the established world today and and there right there when you when you begin the cut and you begin the examination not only is that where the offense lays that's where the spiritual war always begins between the individual man and the crowd, the inner man and the trauma, whether no matter if the trauma is of your flesh or of the or of the 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 natural affections of the crowd in accordance with the flesh, that's where you see this whole thing begin every time. Now you see why you don't belong around some people. Now, if you begin to show or exist in truth and spirit. The living truth, or the, the, the living inner man, which has been made to life, that is the testimony of truth and spirit when it enters the crowd. Your vessel is made to life because now the Holy Spirit is upon your life. And no longer is this definition of knowing oneself a a flesh accord to the crowd. Now the crowd is an offense because your inner man no longer equates to the necessarily to the trauma base um, existence of the crowd, but of the testimony of Jesus Christ, of life made eternal, not life made outside of oneself selfishly, to the flesh accord. So, this is the message of, and I guess I'm going to title this one, Gang Stalking and the Inner Man, because this is the point that each and every individual, not only targeted individual, has to begin the examination. You see, to go to God, you're not going to cheat God. You're only going to cheat yourself if you want to forego the examination and just implicate yourself to the crowd. That's not the will of God for your life. Um, when you make use of your isolation as a targeted individual and as a persecuted believer, you are now implicating yourself to the will of God for your life, even over that of the crowd. That's why I say, don't expect every inner man of the crowd that your inner man comes into contact with to be of the same resolve, to be of the same regenerative response of the born-again nature of the God experience to your inner man, to be the same with that of the crowd, because you're going to find out that to exist this way, our type is very far and few between. And so there is a lot of flesh accord in the crowd attempting to speak for God, which we have today in our church system, in our established ideal of understanding. Hence, when you go into the crowd, if you're truly of the, the God response, the regenerative response, instead of the outward reaction, that's when the outward reaction of the trauma, the trauma-based accord of the individuals of the crowd, will be offensed, will take up offense, will 
lash out. We'll um, pretend to have the door open when really, if it's even half open, we'll more or less be shut to a point. It's like saying um, the inner man up to a point is welcome. But to truly exhibit the inner man of truth and spirit, that is not fully welcome here. That is not what we're talking about. When the crowd is talking about know yourself, its real implica implication is to not really know yourself, but is the pretense of, say, a title. Once again, we get back to, it's either, it's either an existence based on externals or internals of the duality. And so the pretense is a title. It doesn't mean you're actually of the true inner essence of the inner man in truth and spirit. It could just, it is the title of the individual makeup of a trauma-based crowd. So that is the, and that's what the examined expectation of a true believer will recognize in spirit immediately. Um, it is what I see as guarding your heart. It is what I see as a testimony made to life, confronting um, a so-called Christian testimony made by the world. And see, there's a difference between acceptance, worldly acceptance, in the guise, or to be, to be beguiled by the so-called Christian title of acceptance, um, in contrast to that of what it is to be sanctified inwardly by God, and to exhibit and exist in His power. His power, not your power, not the power of your own understanding, not the power of your own uh, selfish titled inner man, because once the the true title of inner man is lost and it, and and your life is lost unto yourself, you've gained the life of God. You've gained eternal life, and so there's no need for pretense on description, language, terminology, uh, numerical things, uh, uh, powers that are that are. Uh, that show that are given in acceptance by the world, false powers, those things are lost because now truth is it's an existence, it's an eternal constancy, it's everlasting relations with the heavenly Father at this point. Hence, you've foregone the worldly gesture for true eternal life, and hence you can no longer judge outside of yourself without being a harsher critic on yourself, and that is to a true fault the godly essence of an introverted believer, a persecuted, targeted individual that God has chosen out, that He sanctified out. And that's the point. The point is to be at that weakness, so that, so at that same place, that's God, you're fully in God's strength. God has, your strength is God's strength. Your battle is God's battle, so it's no longer yours by title. We give up on that. We forego the world to the true inner essence of the inner man, to that of the, the godly sanctification of God's will for your life, which is existence, which is eternal life, which is not space-time continuum historical-based indoctrination to keep the status quo of, 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 of this so-called reality going, this so-called time frame um, going in your life. Hence, your life is now at the behest of the spiritual, the blood, the spiritual blood transformation of Jesus Christ by way of the Holy Spirit. Hence, a lot of things change that you, that you no longer think were, and they aren't. And so, the inner man, focus on the inner man, and, and see a lot of people. And this is the thing: know thyself. What what is that? What is, I don't know what inner. I don't I don't know what know thyself means. What what that is that a title? Is that is that people say? Oh God. You spoke to this, Kevin. You hit the point to this, Kevin. Know thyself. Now, see, the Masons use know thyself very well, but they don't know thyself. There's no light in them. They use it all the time. Cults use this, um, but they have no... There's no eternal life in them. There's no Holy Spirit in them. There's no, there's no suffering. There's no persecution. There's no eternal life. There's no calling of God upon their life. There's no exact cut that they that God has led them to 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 infer that the cut has actually been made in their life, to differentiate them from the world in spirit and in truth. And so keep your guard on, keep your heart on guard, you know. 
keep your 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 spirit the, the the nature of who you are in spiritual discernment and and once I say see a lot of the times it once again all this all this becomes the terminology of beginning uh, semantics of one's walk yeah I don't need to say be spiritually discerning at one point in time or another when you're in eternal existence when you're in in eternal constancy when you're in sanctification of, of who God makes you you are that at, you know every every moment of every minute so you went to the crowd and, and it has its own false perpetual um, offense taken up and it's the same every time you know it can title itself all it wants the spirit of Antichrist is the spirit of Antichrist and when it shows its face um, we're not surprised at it anymore. We used to be of that. We're not surprised at that anymore, guys. We see through that. We exist otherworldly. And a lot of the times, it's um, it kind of reminds me of the statement, not of this world. I see this sticker a lot. I see, I see it, not of this world. But to, to those of us who are truly of God's nature, the supernatural source, um, we're not from this world. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is not from this world. It is given to us. Um, we are in it. But when you're not from it, you understand why we're not of this world. Because the Holy Spirit, it's not from this world. It's given to us while we are in this world. Um, and hence, there is a bit of a slighting when we say, uh, we're not of this world. Um, without the testimony made to life, yes, 